I decided to attempt Crash Force Platinum Trophy and quickly realized how punishing this game would be. What? Crash 4 is a known insanely difficult game to platinum, boasting a 9 out of 10 difficulty and requiring an estimated 100 hours to complete. The first step was to complete the story and unlock all of the extra content this game has to offer. And boy, is there a lot of extra content. Here's just a few unmissable trophies. Crash 4 It's About Time introduces new masks, which allow for plenty of new abilities, wall running, new playable characters, and some of the most difficult and time consuming levels of the entire series, and maybe in the entire platforming genre as a whole. After completing the story, I was free to decide how I wanted to tackle this platinum trophy. <sighs> Crash Bandicoot enthusiasts are well aware of the time trials that await them in every level as they have in the Insane Trilogy, but Crash 4 steps it up one notch. Every level also provides the challenge of an insanely perfect relic, which can be earned by breaking every box in the level without dying. Sometimes that's much easier said than done. Some levels even have over 400 boxes. You can blame the extra playable characters for that one. I started with the insanely perfect relics because the time trials were harder. I left the miscellaneous trophies for later. In order to start with the perfect relics, I had to get all four colored gems first. These gems open up extra paths in some levels which have boxes in them, so you need these gems in order to get every perfect relic. Starting with the red gem, which you earn by jumping on these platforms in a specific order. The green gem is earned after escaping a monster truck. You have to control a remote car to blow up this nitro box right here, which reveals our prize. Next up, the yellow gem is found at the start of another level. There we go, color gem found. They don't give you a trophy for that? I wanna be rewarded for my efforts. Topaz pizzazz. And finally, it was time for the last color gem, the blue gem. Okay, we have to go through this level without breaking a single box. You also can't die because there's no checkpoints. A few moments later. This I've seen someone do. You come this way. And no, clearly, clearly you don't. Like that. There we go. I was navigating through this level very slowly to not hit a box. And then look what happened. <sighs> then the TNT, I gotta figure this part out. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I just needed the momentum. Nice. So this is a checkpoint. You just come in here, jump right off. And that's a checkpoint. That bonus level serving as a checkpoint is super nice, but it can't help what's about to happen. No! I wasn't even thinking! I have to start the whole level over. <laughs> Because of that one checkpoint box, I had to restart the entire level, run through everything again, just to get back to that point. Oh, this is where I hit the damn checkpoint. Okay, got past it. So I kept on keeping on, and this happened soon after. Okay, good. I'm falling. I'm falling! It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Good. From here, I took my time with each jump so I wouldn't break a box or hit an enemy, and eventually I made it to the end of the level for the blue gem and my trophy. All right, we're, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We made it. We made it. My blue gem. And just because, I'm going to break that too. Just because. Sapphire Acquire. With the four color gems completed, I could finally pursue all of the insanely perfect relics. I started with a level I was just playing. You'd think having just familiarized myself with the level, I would find it easy to complete. But no, I struggled. How did, I kill, how did that kill me? How? As you'll soon see, there are plenty of challenging moments like this one in Crash 4. Not with this specific mask, but just subtle ways that cause you to die and force you to restart. Are we serious? Building up your frustration levels little by little. I kept dying on different moments on this level here, but eventually I completed the level. It was a reminder that with some patience and practice, I could absolutely platinum this game. We got our boxes. We got our perfectionist. I'm gonna kill these lions just because I want to. Here we go. Now this level's done. I was earning plenty of insanely perfect relics on the earlier levels pretty easily, but let me show you how I occasionally struggled, especially on some of these ice levels. What? Oh my god, oh my god. Why? Why is that a thing? You can't tell the angle. This is dumb. 
This same level has a rail grinding portion with the time mask, and look at what I did. <laughs> you might be wondering, if I'm dying on this level, how could I possibly platinum crash 4? Well, let me show you. Half an hour later, I made it to the end of this level. We did it! Insanely perfect done. That did take me like half an hour. <laughs> like I thought that was gonna be easy. That was supposed to be easy. It actually took longer than I thought, but we got it done. Later in the game, there is a level called the Crate Escape. This level has us playing as Cortex, who is our fourth and final playable character for a majority of the level before switching to Crash. Now, Crash's portion is widely known as another difficult part of the game and can kill plenty of insanely perfect runs. Oh, we can just jump on that. Oh, I missed that. Single jump after that box. Oh my goodness, I can see the end. I'm getting closer. Wait. You just have to keep moving. I didn't move fast enough, so I didn't make it to the end. So I immediately restarted from the beginning, completed Cortex's portion, and got back to this point. The trick here is you cannot stop moving forward, and you cannot miss a box for obvious reasons. And look how far I got on my very first attempt live on stream for the insanely perfect relic. Yo, my heart is racing right now. My heart is racing. <laughs> Yo, my heart is racing. I was locked in. That's called focus. You know how long? How did the cortex parts take me 14 tries? And I got the crash in my first try back. That's right. I beat one of the hardest parts of the game with little to no practice. If you didn't believe I could platinum this game by now, wait till you see what happens after. No, there's boxes down there. This level here is another popular level, popular for the wrong reasons. I don't remember what's coming. This level, Crash Landed, is a very lengthy level. I continuously forgot what was coming up next, which is a prime recipe for disaster when you have only seconds to break a box before you miss it. This is one of the levels I came back to a few days later after some more practice. I finally had most of the level memorized, but that didn't mean I got it done easily. You'll see I was still missing boxes and even died in silly ways like this. If you've ever attempted to Platinum Crash 4, then you know how punishing Crash right Landed here. can be. I practiced this level for hours on stream and finally made it to the end. I even paused to proclaim that this attempt would be it. It's about to be, this is gonna be it. I knew I made it this far and nothing was left to stop me from this perfect relic. Yes, yes, that's the hardest one I've done so far. That is the hardest level so far. Perfect. If we can do this level, we can do the rest of the game. But of course, there was a much harder level waiting. Arguably the most infamous level from this game, Toxic Tunnels, is up next. Some boxes over there, man. Oh my God. Oh, what? Oh, you're all the way back here. I can't even practice the rest of it. Oh, these, these carts go fast. Bro, I didn't even get a chance to practice. I died. Like, I want to practice that part. One eternity later. Go. Oh. After the cricket, there's an empty one. Oh, there's not an empty one. There's an empty one. Get the cricket. Yes. Yeah, this level took its toll on me. The insanely perfect relic on this level requires several absurdly difficult rooms that you can't even practice. I finally made it past these minecarts and look what happens next. No, I just got hit twice back to back. I was definitely more careful on my next attempt, but I had no idea what was coming. I was warned about these TNT boxes right here. I actually made a huge mistake by not jumping over the small gap above the metal box. Oh wow. But it actually didn't matter. No, that was just lucky. How did I make it back like that? that you didn't expect that but then no yep i had to restart the entire level from the beginning because i was careless yo i will catch you guys tomorrow that's gonna be the end of the stream the next day i was determined to complete this level i got past these bouncing boxes with some strategy which by the way is an insta death if you don't jump past in time and once the hardest portion was completed i nerve-wrackingly proceeded through the tunnels Where, how did i even die yeah, I'm telling you, this level is extreme. I jumped past these boxes again and was extra careful on this platform. I learned my lesson. 
I'm walking underneath it. I really mean it this time. I was really extra careful and extra focused the rest of this level. I was tired of dying. And finally, the end of the level was in my sights. Okay, we did it! We did it! Yes! Yes! Finally! Finally! <sighs> we did it. The hardest level in the game wasn't even that hard. Why you always lying? I'm lying. One of the final levels in the game, Cortex Castle, has some really cool mask sections. But before we get to that, check this out. You know, what are the odds? I was just checking my phone and I didn't die right there. Yeah, I don't know how I didn't die. But moving on, we've got some cool gravity mask sections. Then we get to ride a laser near the end of the level for a hidden box and a hidden gem. And then finally, some of the coolest mask platforming of the entire game before our perfect relic. I actually didn't have too much trouble on this level. Boom! We did it! We did it! There we go! That was a lot easier. That was a lot easier than Toxic Tunnels. That was a lot easier than Toxic Tunnels. At this point, I went back to a dingo and crash level called No Dillo Dallying. This level caused me some of the most heartache I've ever felt while gaming. It was one singular box that caused me to restart the entire level over and over and over. That's the box I messed up on yesterday. When you restart, you have to play as Dingo all over again, and it takes a few minutes to get back to this point. I failed this box so many times, and it might have caused me the most frustration I've felt during this game. I messed up. <sighs> Man! A few minutes later. That box is so evil. And again. Bro, I jumped. Oh, and again. Oh, did you think I got it that time? You can't make it back, though. Oh, no, you probably can. This box is so evil. Oh my god! Time to lock in! The remainder of this level is a jet board section that looks daunting, but really isn't too bad because you can drastically slow yourself down. And just a few moments later... Was very careful. Finally! That might have been the hardest perfect relic so far, honestly. That was insane. That was insane. <sighs> one more perfect relic remaining. If I planned this correctly, we should be able to get four trophies in one level here. It's finally time for the final insanely perfect relic. I set it up to get several trophies at once here, which include all of the perfect relics, completing all levels, beating a level as Coco, and beating a level in pass and play mode which is a forgettable two-player mode for this game. After completing Cortex's portion of the level, we're back to the end of Cortex Castle for another really cool use of all the masks. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Almost died. After that stylish ground pound, we've got all the new masks synergizing together, and I earned some extra style points while riding the laser again. I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. Got my style points. All that was left between me and completing a large portion of this game was some platforming that I had already completed before, and this is what happened. No! <laughs> I, I, I literally beat it. I didn't even know you can die. There. I've never died there. I've literally never died there. Yeah, I'm not sure why I decided to double jump, but I went through the entire level again, Cortex and all, before getting back here one more time, which, by the way, took another hour worth of attempts. We did it! I didn't double jump this time. We did it. Should get, we should get a few trophies right here. The whole picture. That's for completing the timeline. Ladies first for playing as Coco. Perfectionist, which is the hardest one, which is the, the perfect relics. It's my turn for playing in the co-op mode, a useless co-op mode. I was also only one gem away from a fifth trophy in that clip, so I went to clean that up right away. Okay. Next up, I went to complete every level on the inverted mode, which means playing every single level again with a new filter, which is why this level looks like this. 
So our first inverted level done. It's messing with my head, man. Beat a level in inverted mode. If you ask me, the inverted mode was an unnecessary addition to this game. They did not change up the levels enough, and luckily you didn't need to complete them insanely perfect if you did so on the regular version of the level. After a few hours, I beat every level inverted for another trophy, which happens to be King of Blink spelled backwards. King of Bling backwards. Okay, there we go. I decided at this point to skip ahead to step four, miscellaneous trophies. I guess that makes it step three. I don't know. Okay, so for this trophy called Bad Signs, we are in Dingo's first level called Home Cooking, and we just have to shoot these purple signs. There's five in the level. And that's the fifth one, Bad Sign. For this next trophy, we are back near the beginning of the game. You can actually get this trophy as soon as you get here. We have to make some music, and to do that, we have to hit these barrels. And this one right here and a couple more down the road. Okay, so the other three barrels should be right here. There we go, Junkyard Jams. So we're back at the level called Dragon On. This is the same level that you get the blue gem at, and we have to hit these gongs up here for a trophy. There's four of them throughout the map. The second one is right here, and then here's number three and four. They're right next to each other, so we should be able to just hit this right here. So that's three, and then the one in the back over there is number four. Let's make it over there and hope we don't die. Hammer it home. Very nice. And then the very next level called Off Balance. This is the fastest miscellaneous trophy. You just jump, spin this. Tree droppings is what we get. Okay, so I've already finished every level inverted, but I haven't beaten the bosses yet. So there's a trophy for beating a single boss in inverted mode. And then there's another trophy for beating every level in inverted mode. And the bosses count as levels, I believe. So there should be two trophies incoming in a few moments here. And this fight is really jarring with this inverted mode. It's so jarring, but... There it is, beat him any which way. There we go, backwards and forwards. We just beat the boss levels in inverted mode and we unlocked 100% completion. If we watch that ending, it gives us another trophy, which I'll do right now. Overachiever for watching the 100% ending. But there's another set of levels that we need to complete called the flashback tapes. In these levels, you just have to break all the boxes. You can die as many times as you'd like and there's checkpoints, so they're kind of easy. They're kind of like puzzles in a way. Many, many minutes later. And just like that, there's only one level left. So after I complete this level right here, getting all the boxes, we get ourselves a trophy. Okay, so I am coming up to the end of the level here. So this will be the end of our flashback tape. <laughs> Not mess up this time. I did not mess up this time. Oh, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. That's a dead one. Dang. That's tough. I'm back here again. We need to move it. Go. Okay. I made it this time. Our trophy should be coming. There goes another one. Closing the experiment. Ah. Oh. All right, so there's two more miscellaneous trophies for me to get before I start working on the time trials, which is the last thing I need to do. We need to play a game of checkpoint race and crate combo, and we're gonna do the same strategy for both games. So the point of this game is to be a race, but the strategy here is actually just to die in between checkpoints, and then it just advances you to the next player and to the next checkpoint, which is the fastest way to get through this mini game. I am dying in record time time here 76 hundredths of a second i don't think that time was right but then 76 thousandths should be getting a trophy in a second here that is the end of the level fleet of fleet we have to do that one more time for crate combo all right we are coming up on the last checkpoint there we go settle the score okay so i should get a trophy right here i thought i did at least Oh, there we go. And now it was time to earn a platinum relic on every time trial in the game. To do so, we unlocked a new ability called the triple spin after beating the final boss, which also gives us a trophy the first time we triple spin. Whoa. So it was finally time for the conclusion of this platinum trophy, a race against time on every level. We beat it with 11 seconds remaining and we beat it. I ran through most of these levels in just a few attempts and it would help to know what time I needed. This has to be it though. I'm sub one minute. This is it. I don't remember what it was, but I got it. There we go. By now, it was really not too bad with just a little bit of practice on each level. Remember Crash Landed? This level gave me nightmares earlier on the Insanely Perfect Relic, but the time trial not so much. All that practice paid off. I even earned a relic higher than Platinum on this level. Yeah, I thought the time trials were harder than the perfect relics. Maybe it was after all my time spent on the game, but I really did speed through these time trials. I left the infamous toxic tunnels for last, and look what happens when I complete it. Whoa, wait.
These final runs on Toxic Tunnels were after midnight, so I was dead tired. After that gold relic right there, I jumped right back in. I was seriously more motivated than ever at this point. Oh, I don't remember what I needed. I don't remember what I needed. <laughs> Bruh. Looking back at it, it really was kind of ridiculous. I kept getting a gold relic on the last time trial I needed. But then this happened. <laughs> yes, faster than sound. Oh my goodness. 106 com. Oh my goodness. That means the platinum trophy is going to pop in five seconds here. Let's do it. Overachieve. Over, overachiever. Oh. Master Marsupial, finally, that took like a month to complete. I don't even know how to feel right now. It's insane that like I'm finally done with this game.